Hey, what's happening, everybody? Uh, whether you just ordered a dial tune drum, you just received a dial tune drum, or you're thinking about a dial tune drum, uh, I want to walk you guys through a pretty straightforward quick start on how to get your drum out of the box, set up, get you off the plane as quickly as possible. Let's dig in. So I got my box here. I'm going to bring this over to my stool, and I'm going to open it up. I've, I've already kind of cut, that's all I've done is just like pretty much cut the tape off. Um, when you open up your dial tune, first thing you're going to notice is that there's some foam packing with your drum inside of a poly bag. Do not grab from the foam, just as a simple suggestion. It's merely there just to make sure that the drum stays seated within the cardboard container when it was shipped in um, and doesn't get jostled around too much. So grab from the drum itself, lift out, and I like to then just put the box aside. Now don't discard the box, critical note, inside the box you're going to have also uh, some cable. Do not lose this, you're going to want this cable. Uh, this is your replacement cable, um, which more is available on our website, but do not lose that as you're kind of going through this. So I'm going to take the foam inserts off. Um, let's talk very briefly about the weight of this drum. Um, dial tune is built to withstand everything you possibly throw at it. And as a result of that, you know, this is a, it's a fairly sturdy drum. It comes in at about 20 pounds. We recommend um, a pretty sturdy stand. I have a, a DW stand here, but there's a whole bunch of stands that we recommend. We wrote a blog post on our website, which you can check out. Um, but a couple ways to kind of think about this. So let's uh, pull this apart. Any stand will do. That's the cool thing about it. Um, if the stand that you have, even a semi-flimsy stand, um, will work. This is a beautiful uh, brass shell. Um, any stand will work if the stand cannot grab the drum from the outside of the hoop. It can hug the inside of the hoop. And uh, that's actually, actually what I got going on here. So um, really the first thing I do when I pull the drum out is um, just inspecting it. A couple kind of ways to think about this um, is this drum, you know, has not necessarily been um, tuned. Doesn't sound bad, I'll tell you that much. Um, but I want to check for the snare wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this kind of upside down on my snare stand. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just check the snare wires. Make sure that the snare wires look like they're in the center, which they do. And when I engage them, which I am, they look like they're centered up. If you have any issues with the snare wires, you know, one of the best things you can do is just take a drum key um, and on the lugs on either side of the snare wire, right, you got the snare throw and on the other side you got the butt plate. Uh, just use a drum key to loosen and you can adjust this plastic tab to center the wires. If you're looking straight down the drum, you can adjust the, the wires so that they sit flush right in the middle. Um, so. With that, I'm, I'm going to look around the drum. When we put these out the door, we've inspected every drum to make sure that the cable is sitting nicely inside each of the pulleys. That's a key component. It's going to make it really easy for the drum system to tune. If the cables are kind of outside of the pulley area, it's not going to tune it evenly. So I'm just you know, doing a quick inspection. Here's a nice little hang tag here that kind of tells me what's going on about the drum. I love that. Um, everything so far is looking really good. I like it. So let's get this drum now right side up on the snare stand. So with, to get you oriented to the drum, with the snare throw kind of facing you, there is a dial on the right for uh, the top head and a dial on the left for the bottom head. And uh, just give it a hit tone, turn off the snare wires. So we're going to need some tuning here. Um, first thing that I like to do when I'm like tuning my drum, just like any other standard drum, is I, I want on my snare, I want the bottom head, the, the rezzo head, to be pretty table tight. So again, this is the bottom head. Turn it right like this clockwise to tune it up, counterclockwise to tune it down. 
I'm just gonna crank it. As I'm checking out the dials, how's the action? Does it feel pretty smooth? There should be some friction in there. That's intentional. We built it that way. Want to make sure that it's not backing out on you as you're playing the drum, but you should be able to turn it. That cracking sound that you're hearing, that's the drum head as it moves across the shell. It's kind of making that cracking sound as it kind of like moves across the shell. That's how you know you're actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, feels pretty good. I'm just going to keep going a little bit more. I like it really tight. Everybody's different. That's what's kind of cool about dial tune is we kind of give you as much flexibility as you want. Feels pretty good. Uh, on your drum, if you want the top and bottom head, your batter and rezzo head to be tuned exactly the same, you can do that. If you want them to be tuned differently, like I do, you can do that too. Um, so I got the bottom head tuned up well. Got the top head. Man, listen to that. You can kind of That's pretty cool, just straight away. I mean, it sounds. It sounds pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. So, um, it's pretty easy to tune. You know, turn the snare throw wire off for a sec, uh, snare wires off. Um, Some pretty neat little features there, just being able to tune it up and down. Let's see how it sounds like. It's pretty crazy. I know with, you know, traditional snares, you know, as you're going lug to lug, maybe in a star pattern, you're really tuning a half step or a whole step every single time. Um, but the ability to get the drum, you know, tuned evenly using a single dial as you're tuning it up and down, it's pretty, it's pretty neat. Um, I like to explore too, you know, as I turn the snares on. I like to explore with some dampening. Let's hear what that sounds like. And uh, let's take it all the way down, now with some dampening on it. Dang. I like that. So right now, interesting, uh, my snare wires, kind of as I was tensioning them, they're kind of at the top of the limit, which means that when the snare strainer was installed, uh, the tensioner that's on the snare strainer was kind of near the top of its, its end point. Um, what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm thinking about that. I'm gonna loosen the, uh, the plastic clip that's attached to the snare strainer on this side, give it a little bit more wiggle room, then really back off the snare strainer so that when I tighten it, I'll have a lot more room to either pull in and choke that snare wire out or not. So let's let's turn these off. We're going to we're going to play with that. This is this is what we're doing in real time, you know. This is how you, when you get your snare, you're going to want to play with it. So again, I'm going to grab my drum key. I've got my snare wires here. I've got them loose. I'm going to loosen up this and I'm going to give it a little bit of room, just a little bit of room. Perfect. Then as I tighten it up, hopefully, this is going to have a lot more space. And again, 
if I'm at the upper end of my snare wires, what I'm doing is I'm really loosening that drum and I'm going to pull the plastic uh, strap. There you go. Pull the plastic strap in more. I'm losing my words. Um, I'm going to pull it in more into the um, system so it's going to remain tight even though I'm giving it a little bit more uh, room using the dial on the snare strainer. It's just good to remember to give yourself some space. Yeah, it feels good. All right, let's crank that down, tighten it up. Nice. Yep, got a lot more room to choke it out with. Cool. I think I got what I wanted. Now for dampening options, you know, a second ago I, I put on this snare weight. This is an M80, but uh, you can use a Rezo ring, you can use a wallet, some gaffer's tape, or you can leave it, you know, wide open. Nice. Um, so let's see what this sounds like now. Uh, I turned the snare wires on. Yep. Let's choke that in a little bit more. Here we go. Love it. Let's crank it up, see what it sounds like. And again, the ability to go from low to high, high to low, whatever, just you know, finding that exact sound you're looking for, it's so easy using a dial tune snare. Love it. So that's pretty much what's what. Let's talk about taking the head off. So I just had this guy cranked, right? I'm gonna take this off for a second. Um, just had this bad boy cranked. Now, talk about going all the way down. Um, as I take tension out of the system, to take the head off, you don't actually need to go as far as you think you do, but to put the head back on, you do need to actually back off the tension on a dial a lot because what's happening right now is that this is the outer hoop which is controlled boom, by this sub hoop and the sub hoop is where the lugs are connected to the cable and it's basically pulling the whole system down evenly all the way around the drum so that's how easy it is to swap out a cable or swap out a, um, a drum head but when you go to put the drum head back on, if for whatever reason, you go to put the support hoop back on or the outer hoop on, and you're like, hmm, I'm having a tough time engaging it. Pro tip, keep backing off the dial. If you want to go further than you think you do. Um, and oftentimes, uh, that's uh, one of the biggest things we get a, a comment on or someone will send us a question online or shoot us an email is like, hey, I can't get this, the hoop back on. I think the drum is broken. Drum's fine. Just need to back off the dial a lot more. So as you can see, it's a lot easier to get the, the hoop on. So once you got it there, you can dial it back to tune. Um, cool. So that's getting a head on, getting a head off. Let's see, we'll get some tone. Dial. Yeah. And you can kind of hear. There it is. Kind of cool. That simple. Um, so, uh, if you are getting your drum out of the box, uh, another thing that I like to do, as I was mentioning a moment ago, is I will go and take a look at the dials. I want to make sure that the dial action feels really good. This one feels great. They should feel really great. I mean, we try our best in the warehouse uh, as we're developing these and as we're putting them together to make sure that everything's good. But if for whatever reason, let's, uh, let's go to this dial, for example. It's, it's my, my top head. I got to crank my bottom head a little bit looser. If for whatever reason you're like, hey, there's some wiggle in the dial, or I notice if I'm looking around the edges of the dial that it's not sitting perfectly flush, another super easy fix 
when you're looking at the dial and it says dial tune on the E, you'll notice there's a little hole. That's where the set screw goes. And if you have a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench, also known as a hex key, you can just take that, honestly, and um, put it in here because what this is going to do is once you have it activated, where's the little hole? There it is. Um, once you have it in, it's pretty straightforward to uh, disengage. Uh, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Now, um, we've hopefully cranked these down pretty hard, so just keep in mind if you're having any issues undoing it, which I like to do, uh, I will use the long end of my screw, there it is, to get a little bit more torque and leverage, and then I'll just, that's it. Um, once it's there, you can use the longer end to undo your set screw. And by the way, using a two and a half millimeter hex wrench Allen key um, and undoing the set screw, this is how you take the dial off. And to swap out the cable in the system, this is called the dial housing. This is where the cable loops around our specifically engineered uh, worm gear. Um, and this is how you would replace cable. Uh, there's obviously one side facing up for the top head. On the other dial, it's basically reversed. It's, uh, you got the uh, worm gear on the other side facing down. And every time you're replacing a cable, whether it's the top head or the bottom head, you're going to want to remove both dials and set those aside. Make sure not to back off the set screw too much. You notice I only just did a couple turns just to loosen it because it can come out and you don't want to do that because if you drop a set screw somewhere on the ground, that's going to be a fun time finding it. You need the set screw in order to keep the dial on. So I took it off. Um, we're not replacing a cable today, but everything looks good. I want to make sure that this is flush to uh, the side. So I'm just going to make sure it goes back on. Notice there's a little bit of wiggle. That's okay. It's intentional to wiggle like that um, until it's time to screw it in. So I'm going to put my two and a half millimeter Allen wrench back in there, make sure it's seated. And then using my hand, I'm going to make sure that it's nice and even as I'm tightening it. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. It's always the way to go. So I got a nice little tension going on in there. Mm, that feels good. And it looks awesome. Set to go. That's it. That's how easy it is. Um, boom, let's put this back down. Let's see what else. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we got the big things. I'm looking at my list, orienting to the drum. This is good. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, you know, you can always hit us up at hi at dialtunedrums.com. Uh, DM us on Instagram or shoot us a message on Facebook. Uh, always happy to help, especially as you're just getting started. But that is your quick start guide. Kind of like summarize everything that's going on. When you pull your drum out of the box, pull from the drum, not from the foam handles. Um, first thing you do when you uh, get your drum out of the packaging is just take a look all around, make sure that the drum looks good. If there's any issues, you know, you can always reach out to us. Um, I make sure that the cable is run all the way through the system, that it's engaged fully in the wells of the pulleys, um, just as a quick look. Uh, then uh, I'll make sure that the dials, they feel good. If they don't feel like they're too wiggly or wobbly, um, you're awesome. If there is a little bit of wiggle or wobble, first thing you do is take a two and a half millimeter hex wrench, go into that set screw, either tighten it up or loosen it, adjust it so it's flush to the dial face, tighten it again, see if that resolves the problem. Um, then, you know, now that you love it, it looks good, uh, tension your, your rezzo head. I like it super tight tabletop, so I crank the snot out of it. Um, I try to get that thing as, like, wood as possible. Um, then I look at the snare wires. I make sure that they're centered. They feel good, that the, uh, the tensioner on the snare strainer has nice room to go up or down so I can loosen it or I can tighten it to choke out the wires if I want to. If it's kind of too far to the loose end and I can't loosen it anymore, if it's too far to the um, top end and I can't tighten it anymore, that's a problem. So I want to make sure that it's nice and centered on both sides. If I have to adjust, um, of course, I'll use my, uh, my drum key. And then uh, once that's all set up and I got my snare wires where I want, my bottom head where I want, I'll start playing with the top, find that, find that sound I'm looking for. Personally, I, I love overtones. It's a lot easier to take overtones out than it is to put them back in. So, of course, I'm going to use, you know, uh, 
what I prefer, I use I love a I love a snare weight. You can use a reso ring, moon gel, uh, wallet, gaffer's tape, whatever you want. I'm gonna find that sound I'm looking for. I like that. Let's crank that. Put this guy over here. That's it. Thanks guys so much for watching. Really appreciate all your support and help. If there's anything we can do to support you, shoot us an email at hi at or hit us up on social media. Thanks for watching.